Hi everyone, I'm David Fisher, and this is Presidential Chronicles, the series of books and videos on American history as seen through the lives of the presidents of the United States. This episode is from the life of James Monroe, and the focus is teenage war hero. James Monroe was born April 26, 1758. His parents were Spence and Elizabeth Monroe. They were well-to-do plantation owners, so Monroe likely didn't want for much as a youth, although we don't really know a lot about his youth other than his parents died when he was pretty young. In fact, he was only 14 when his mother passed away and his father died just a couple of years later. So it was actually his uncle, Judge Joseph Jones, who really kept an eye on Monroe and his siblings and really encouraged him to pursue his education, to attend the College of William and Mary, and that's where he showed up in Williamsburg in the middle of the 1770s. This was a tough time for the colonies, who were very much at odds with the mother country of England ever since 1765, when England imposed the Stamp Act and strong resistance to that direct tax by the colonies. Even after it was repealed, they came upon them with the Townsend Acts and the Tea Act, and then the so-called Intolerable Acts, which were mostly focused more on Massachusetts than anywhere else. But the Virginians felt common cause with their fellow colonials, and they were also thinking more about rebellion and perhaps independence. And in fact, it was a Virginian, Richard Henry Lee, who proposed independence formally in June 1776 at the Second Continental Congress. Well, in the meantime, Virginia's youth was ready to take up arms and become part of that fight. And James Monroe was one of them. And there was a rallying cry around colleges like the uh, College of William and Mary, where Patrick Henry had come and helped organize that youth, train them a bit, and then sent them north, ready to go to war under General George Washington. Well, by the time they arrived in the north, things were not going very well for that Continental Army. Washington and his men had just suffered a terrible defeat in New York. It was really one of the low points of the entire war. Enlistments were about to run out, and Washington needed a bold move, some kind of momentum to keep this effort alive. And so he came up with a plan. It was for December 25th, 1776, Christmas Day, actually that night. He was going to cross the Delaware River and attack a Hessian compound in Trenton, New Jersey. Now, the Hessians were mercenaries, hired guns from uh, Germany that uh, King George had hired to augment his own army. And they were stationed, about a thousand of them, nearby. But the question is, what could Washington do about it? Well, he came up with a plan, a bold plan, to cross this perilous river that was full of chunks of ice in the middle of the night. They were going to have three different columns converge on Trenton all at the same time. It was a complicated plan. In fact, only one of those columns actually made it across. So instead of about 5,000 men at his disposal, Washington had only about 2,400. The crossing is depicted in this famous painting by Emanuel Leutze, Washington crossing the Delaware. When most people take a look at this, what do they see? They see the commander in chief, they see George Washington, and of course they might see the American flag, but take a look at the rest of this painting. There's 11 others in that boat with Washington and all the boats behind him trying to get through these large chunks of ice to get across the Delaware River on this really uh, treacherous kind of uh, attack against these Hessians. Well, one of those in there is Lieutenant James Monroe. He's actually the one holding the flag next to Washington. But these are not really soldiers. These are students. They're farmers. They're everyday folk who have picked up arms to fight for American independence. And so this painting, while it all focuses on Washington crossing the Delaware, it really is a depiction of what the Continental Army was all about. And James Monroe, 18 years old, is right in the middle of that featured picture. Well, they were delayed getting across. It's a freezing cold. They, they're a slow march to Trenton. And fortunately, there's actually some locals who are joining the march who are sort of rallying around their American comrades as they're getting ready to attack in Trenton. They arrive after dawn. They still have the element of surprise. And so Washington goes forward with the attack and James Monroe plays a critical role. He helps lead an assault along with his captain, William Washington, against small artillery of the enemy. In fact, they captured those guns, which was really the last possibility that the Hessians were going to have to fight back in this fight. General James Wilkinson said later about the work that Captain Washington and Lieutenant Monroe did on that night to seal off those guns. He said, these particular acts of gallantry have never been noticed. 
and yet could not have been too highly appreciated. For if the enemy had got his artillery into operation in a narrow street, it might have checked our movement and given him time to reflect and reform. The heroic actions of Captain Washington and Lieutenant Monroe put that off and paved the way for an amazing, overwhelming American victory. The Americans lost only two people killed, and that was from frostbite. They had five wounded. Compare that to the Hessians, 22 killed, nearly 900 captured. The first major battlefield victory of the war for the United States. Morale boomed, enlistment soared, the world noticed. This was a really big deal. In fact, the Americans went further and they went and attacked Princeton right afterwards and were successful. But not part of that revelation or the enjoyment of all of this or the frightened Princeton. James Monroe was not part of that. Why? Well, he was one of the five wounded. He took a bullet in the shoulder. It cut an artery. He would have bled out, most likely, if not for the heroics of Dr. John Riker. John Riker was one of those locals who joined them in the march that night. And the fact that he was there, he was able to stop the bleeding and at least keep Monroe alive. In fact, you can see Monroe injured off to the right in this famous painting by John Trumbull. Well, Monroe fought for his life for about 10 days under the watchful eye of a Mr. Criel and then was transferred to Philadelphia for nine weeks of convalescence. This was a Mr. Weinkoop who kept an eye on him. And he made it through all of this at the age of 18. He recovered, he was promoted to captain, but he had no troops to actually command. And so he was sent back to Virginia to try to raise some more troops, but he wasn't really successful in that. So Monroe continued in his service. Now that he's recovered, he signed on as an aide de camp to Brigadier General William Sterling. And he was with him for about a year and a half. That included the horrible winter at Valley Forge. He was there for the Battle of Monmouth. But then in 1779, Monroe left the service. But he did so with a very strong recommendation from a pretty important person. That's right, General George Washington. Washington wrote his friend Archibald Carey back in Virginia about a brave, active, and sensible officer, speaking of Monroe. As we cannot tr introduce him into the Continental Line, it were to be wished that the state could do something for him to enable him to follow the bent of his military inclination and render service into his country. If an event of this kind could take place, it would give me particular pleasure as the esteem I have for him and a regard for his merit conspire to make me earnestly wish him to see, to see him provided for in some handsome way. It's a pretty nice letter of recommendation coming from the father of the country. Well, Monroe is out of his teenage years. He's now 21 years old. He's going back home to Virginia. He's got to figure out what to do next. That's the story for another day. That is James Monroe and teenage war hero from the life of James Monroe. For more Presidential Chronicles, check out my books on Amazon.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm David Fisher and this is Presidential Chronicles.